related to having family and friends always coming to visit. I mean, for I think that it was the house more than to visit us. It was the magnet that they wanted to come and visit us and stay with us and and, and share uh, the space and the openness with us in the house. So uh, for us, it was very interesting to see that everybody said, oh, let's go to Manuel and Amy's house. And he's like, why? Why don't we go to other houses? Said, no, 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 it's fun. So people like the house. They, they actually like to be with us. That was the first discovery and the first thing that we noticed. So always the house and its architecture was a facilitator to make sure that there was quite a bit of intimacy and socialization that was that was attractive enough for people to feel comfortable, okay? Um, the second one was something that we discovered when um, the, the university has a board of trustees, which is the most important um, governing body that the university has. And uh, it's, uh, the members are elected uh, statewide and some of them are appointed by the uh, governor, but uh, it's a very important group of people. One of them, it was a very good friend of mine. Uh, she was a Hispanic woman, and uh, her name uh, was, she, she passed away a few years ago. Her name is, uh, was Dorothy Gonzalez. And it, uh, always the, uh, Members of the Board of Trustees at Michigan State University have the opportunity to be reelected, okay? And Dorothy hear from someone who I don't know who was, hear that my house was very inviting to host social events. I, I'm sure that it was one of my friends, but I don't believe uh, that uh, I organize any kind of big event in my house until this one, but for some reason, this friend of mine who I never learned who was it, told her that my house was very appropriate to host uh, fundraising. And actually, what she did was asking me if I could be, if she let me, if she let her uh, borrow the house for her reelection fundraising. And we said, yeah, absolutely, but what do we have to do? I said, don't worry about it. Uh, my group is going to host, do all the logistics, and they're gonna bring the food, they're gonna, everything is gonna be catered, and you just leave the house, okay? We'll clean, and they're gonna clean, they're gonna do taking care of everything. And I was like, what? At that moment, I didn't know that the house was so popular to host social events. And in this particular case, we counted that it was roughly 90 people in the house in the two levels. Uh, because it's very easy to go into the first level room and then go downstairs and then in the family room. Uh, quite a bit of people feed it in there. So the food was distributed in the two levels and it was successful. It was hugely successful. Then my wife uh, hosted receptions for teachers. Uh, so whenever the teachers needed to get uh, together, she's a teacher, uh, she invited uh, invited to the house. So they, she used the house for it. So we discovered another utilitarian kind of thing that it was that the house lended itself to host uh, events because it was a very nice thing. Our kids noticed that, that uh, because we didn't exclude them, but let them see what was happening. So they were very impressed, and I didn't know that at the time, because you are organizing something and you ask the kids to go to the room so they cannot be, uh, I mean, it's adults, and so you try to separate them. Take the dog and the cat over there so they are not in the middle of all the action. But the kids, our children, recognized that that was a very important things that we did, professionally speaking, in which the house helped us to do that thing. It was fun, unbelievable. So in a way, that has uh, two effects. For us, very direct one in helping people that ask us to host things. And the second one for the children, because they 
actually saw, uh, saw their parents uh, socializing and hosting events and hosting people that were in the room. I mean, they were Congress, uh, members of Congress, of the, the Michigan Congress who were in the house and stuff like that. So they were impressed, but at the same time, again, as, as you probably said, it, the benchmark start moving up, the sun suddenly it's like, oh, our partners are cool in these kind of things. So that's the other thing that indirectly had an um, impact into what the house was all about. Mm -hmm. That's so great. I mean, just to think of a space that can influence so much mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. terms of mm -hmm. how you move and everything. So what do you think uh, right now when your kids go out and interact with other people, do you think growing up in that particular house actually helped them connect to like more people or be a certain way as opposed to maybe growing up in, as you said, a boxy colonial house? Um, that is a very good question and I, pr I have not I have not had a direct question about that. I'm sure that they would be telling me, I don't think so, it, uh, I'm like anybody else. Nevertheless, uh, my wife and I, we firmly believe that the house helped them to be intuitively social, intuitively connected. Um, to use a space in a way that it really helped them to be part of a group, to be part of the family. Uh, that family requires connections that uh, in, in boxy places we always recognize that it's easy for somebody to disappear and go to the next room and then you don't see it. In this place it was difficult to hide, at least in the, in the, in the first floor. And and that is what I think that help uh, our kids to to value that there was a space, and they actually help them to to see space as a connector rather than a space as a divider or anything like that. So I think so. But 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 again, I haven't had the direct. Uh, a question to them, I'm sure that eventually I'll ask them and, and then I will let you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm sure that they do because um, they, when they describe the houses that they are going to be building, you know, as, uh, when they finish their careers, they are always thinking that, oh, I wanted to have this and like in the house we have this. And they are always reflecting in the open space mm -hmm. and in the wide space in which everybody can get together. So I think that it has a, um, an indirect uh, impact on them. Whether psychologically, cognitively, they were able to be more open or not is something that I don't know. This, we, we, I mean, my wife and I, we tend to believe that it was because of us uh, that we helped them to see the benefits of being always open and welcoming and, and um, inviting. Uh, I don't think that it would be the house per se, mm -hmm. but you never know because they were hosting older. Uh, actually, yeah, there was evidence that they, the three of them hosted their friends in the house. So there was no barriers or any kind of shy kind of thing that, oh, I don't want to invite my friends to the house or anything like that, so they are open in that sense, so probably indirectly had an impact on them. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure they did. Uh, anything else you would like to add, Professor, in terms of the house and any particular uh, memory you have or anything special? My, uh, one of the most incredible memories is when my mom uh, came to visit the house. I bought the house before my mom had a chance to see it. The same with my parents-in-law, and uh, and the three of them reacted the same way because they live in houses that are boxes, uh, in traditional colonial spaces that are very functional, and but that's it. It's like wow, this space is very open. So that was a very interesting reaction that I had. The second one. It was uh, related to how much work it was to maintain the house clean and to do it because it was too big. Mm -hmm. 
and to be making sure that everything needed to be neatly placed because the house couldn't be looking like a disaster area, so we needed to take care of that. Uh, I think that those are the two things. And, and the other one was a, a, something that we discovered also as well, is now that we are in the process of selling it, is that few people la like that kind of architecture. Not everybody, even though when we think, we always thought that people would enjoy to be, to be in open spaces in the architecture that is traditionally Frank Lloyd Wright style, what we discover is that not everybody is interested in actually living in a space that is completely open. That you probably need a personality or you need a taste for it, that it makes you more inclined to accept that everything is going to be open, so there is no boxes. But I, we might find that uh, uh, the, uh, that's what we were noticing when people say the, that this, wow, it's open. Duh, well, it's a Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> so that's what we discover. But those are the, it's a wonderful experience that we have with the house and we just uh, like it. Yeah, that's very interesting. I guess, yeah, you do need to have a certain kind of mindset, I mean, to understand that this space will actually bring in so much more other than like maybe a traditional house where yep. you have your own privacy and right. everything, and as right. opposed to your wonderful house, which right. is right. Like, open. And, wow, I never thought of that because uh, I was talking about how this particular style was uh, very radical in the 50s when it was introduced. Right. But right. wow, to actually think that it is in a way radical even now that people are not very open to... Yeah, yeah. If you see the architecture, if you see, if you drive into most of the new subdivisions in Okimos, Williamston, Mason, and... Hazlitt, what you will find, even in, in, in um, uh, East Lansing, in the section that is connected with uh, White Hills, and that's a, and is in the northwest, uh, northeast side of the of the metro area. If you see those houses, new ones in the subdivisions, it's I wanted to say maybe ten percent maybe a little bit more, maybe 20%, that that would be two out of 10 houses, it's going to be modern. Mm -hmm. Eight out of 10 are conventional and colonial. And we discovered that. There is an architect, uh, uh, designer, uh, um, produces houses here. It's called, uh, what is the name of it? Kenneth Black? Uh, Holden Vida? No, it, 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 it's a um, developer. It's a developer and also an architectural film, uh, firm. And they have uh, houses, I think so. Mm -hmm. And they have, they have, they bought uh, sections in Hazlitt, uh, which are mostly Hazlitt, in which most of the houses are modern and open space. Uh, but what I was surprised is that from the outside, it looks like an open space, but some of the houses, when you are inside, they are in boxes. Wow. It's few houses that are completely open and, and giving you the sense of what Frank Lloyd Wright always wanted, that the space and utility always was combined seamless. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor. It's my pleasure.